Welcome to the review of the GWM Tank 300 and welcome to part three of the series that I've been doing. Part one was looking at the car just from an overall perspective, a walk around to show you everything that it's got to offer. Part two was everything off-road. So from the launch, what was it like off-road? How did it work? What are the features it's got and how did it perform? And today, part three is just a review of what it's like to live with from a day-to-day -day point of view. And the wonderful people at Naked Insurance have got me covered. Literally, they've got me covered. They're the sponsor of today's video, which I'll talk about a little later. So the Tank 300, GWM's answer to a rugged off-roader, all-wheel drive, but still premium and comfortable on the inside. And I think they've done a great job. Although there's a few things I'm not too sure about, but overall, I think it's a great car. You get two engine options. The first one is the two liter turbo, non-hybrid engine, which puts out 162 kilowatts and 380 newton meters of torque. And then you've got engine option number two, which is again, another two liter turbo, and it's got 180 kilowatts and 380 newton meters of torque. But because it's a hybrid, you've got all of that electric power adding more oomph to the system, which is now gonna sit you with 225 kilowatts and 648 newton meters of torque. Yeah, now on paper, that's a lot of power and this car should feel immensely quick, which it does. But in order to feel all of that power, you need to be driving the car in sport mode. And by putting into sport mode, the car becomes a lot more aggressive. It becomes a lot more sharper. The throttle response is more instant and you feel all of that power when you put your foot down. So when you put your foot down, the car immediately just pulls off and you feel all of that power instantly. And that you forget that you're in a car that's this big. Now, thankfully you've got a battery that's gonna keep charging as you drive and as you brake. So you're not really ever gonna run out of battery power but it's going to constantly be topping up that battery or that's the capacity of the battery as you're driving throughout your day and throughout your journeys so yes you do get a lot of power out of this car and if you do put it back into normal driving mode or even into eco things start to settle down a lot more but that's where one of the issues of the car comes for me because then it becomes a lot more sluggish and you can i don't know it just it doesn't drive that well in my opinion when you're in those other modes if you're in sport mode you can feel the hybrid system you can feel the cars more instantly powered um, and it becomes a lot more fun to drive and it's and it acts like a, a hybrid because now you're getting all of that electric power to benefit from but when you go back into eco and normal as i've said yes you still benefit from the the ev power ev electric vehicle power that you get from the car but the car is really sluggish so this is the throttle response right my foot went down nothing's happening there we go it feels like there's a three second delay between when you put your foot down and when the car actually decides what you want to do and it's just bizarre like listen you'll, you'll hear the clicking it's me putting my foot down flat there we go now it kicks in again so yeah that's not really a good thing for me on this car is that the throttle response is really really bad and in order to drive it in sport mode all the time your fuel consumption is not going to be good and i think the whole benefit around driving a hybrid like this is that you can benefit from better fuel consumption and gwm do claim from a fuel consumption point of view 8.4 liters per 100 k's for this hev version and then they also claim 9.5 liters per 100 k's for the non-hybrid normal petrol version which is going to be coming out later this year now those already aren't great figures but we know from the chinese brands that fuel economy is not on the top of their list it's more about how does the car drive what are the features you're getting styling technology safety systems etc so when you buy a chinese car just know that you aren't buying it for better fuel consumption maybe for the other hevs like the the h6 and the jolian i think there you do benefit from it but here in the tank, I just think there's too much car. It's heavy, 
the wheels are a lot bigger. There's a lot that's going against you to get better fuel consumption. And speaking of that, I was getting around 10 liters per 100 Ks during my daily driving. Um, I've now since been driving the car in sport mode so that I can enjoy it a little bit more and kind of get rid of that throttle response issue that I'm battling with. So now I'm currently enjoying or reaping the rewards of 12.8 liters per 100 Ks. But it's fine because I'm enjoying the car, driving it in sport mode, putting my foot down and it goes when I tell it to go. And then onto pricing and there are three derivatives that you can choose from from the tank. Right now it's only the hybrid version that you can buy and you're going to have to fork out 851,000 Rand for that. But in a few months time or even a couple of weeks when they start to release the standard 2 litre turbo version, you're going to get two options of that one. And of that version, you're going to be given a Super Luxury, which you can buy for 725,000, and the Ultra Lux, which you'll then buy for 775,000 Rand. So yes, that's a lot of money to put into a car, but car prices these days are ridiculous anyway. So you then need to weigh up what are the benefits that I'm getting in spending that amount of money, and there's a lot of them. So firstly, the car is filled with technology, safety systems, luxurious touches comforts and everything like that for starters on the inside here you've got a 12 inch display in front of the driver and another 12 inch display for your infotainment that you can also look through all your settings operate carplay android auto all wirelessly if i can mention that so again that's another convenience factor that you're going to have to kind of look at here because not all cars are wireless but from a driver point of view you do have a digital display there's not a lot that you can do from a customization point of view all that really changes from that aspect is when you put the car into off-road mode, you get different off-road settings um, and gauges and levels that you can look at from the angles of the car to which wheels are turning. Is it the front, the rear? You can see if your diffs are locked and all of that. But then on the infotainment screen, you can look at your car settings. Um, you can also look at some things with regards to the battery to see if you're either using energy, are you storing energy? Um, are you doing both and things like that so there's quite a bit of things you can play with in terms of the infotainment but from the driver point of view it's quite standard through the infotainment you can also have a look at all of your 360 cameras now that's one of the most impressive parts about this car is that you've got a full 360 camera system that's high definition it's super clear you can see all the way around the car you can move this little dot that'll even show you every angle of the car whatever angle you choose to look at it's going to then pinpoint it onto that exact one um, which is also really good for off-roading so you can see um, what's next to each of your specific tires um, so that you don't end up knocking or scratching any of them which is very handy and then as i spoke about in the off-road video you've also got some unique features to this car um, which is the low speed off-road cruise control which you can set once you're in your off-road modes um, you can set to a very slow speed so that the car will then navigate on its own and all you have to do is kind of do the steering and input from that point of view and then you've got tank turn over here which you've also got in the p series limited um, which is going to lock the inside wheel at the back so that it's going to almost create a pivot so that you are turning like a tank right tank turn that's kind of where it comes from so it makes your turning circle very tight, tighter than what it would normally be, so that you can use that off-road if you do need to get around obstacles, around trees and things like that. You've got the option to make your turning circle very short. And then looking around the rest of the interior, it is filled with leather. You've got a leather dash, you've got a leather seat, you've got a leather steering wheel, you've got leather things on the arms, on the doors, you've got an armrest down here that's leather. The leather touches continue throughout the cabin. You've got contrast white stitching all over. It adds a level of premiumness. Then what you wouldn't expect from a car, I would say of this price point, and I think that adding those extra touches um, really adds to the appeal of looking at getting a car like this. The build quality is also really good. Now, yes, there's leather, but there's also plastic all over, but where they've used plastic, it is solid. These air vents that are shaped like, um, they look like, um, airplane engines or vents or whatever which looks similar to the ones in Mercedes Benz but whatever if they're gonna build them then build them and do them better which they've done so yes I do believe that these vents are better than the ones in a Merc the build quality is solid there's no squeaking there's no bumping nothing in this interior rattles squeaks or bumps at all nothing which is very impressive for an off-roader it's been built solidly and there's no rattles anyway 
all I'm getting is a little bit of wind noise off of these big square mirrors up here, which I think is to be expected from a big car like this. But otherwise, the interior is really, really impressive. The leather steering wheel has also got all the buttons that you're going to need to navigate through all of your screens. You've also got gear selectors at the back here, which you don't really need to use, but they're there if you need to. You've got a really funky gear shifter, which I really like. It's quite futuristic and looks like it comes from a spaceship, or as a lot of people have said on my TikTok videos, it looks like you can fly a plane with it. But no, you cannot fly this car. Um, further down on the center console here, you're going to find wireless charging, USBs, the rotary dial to go between your different drive modes, which you can select on different terrains you're going on. Do you want eco? Do you want sports? Are you going off-road in the sand? Are you going into mud? You've got everything that you can choose from. And if you want to look into more detail of what the car can do off-road, then go and check out my other video, which I'm going to have linked down in the description. Other things I like about the interior is that you do have a separated climate control. So you can operate things quite quickly if you need to with a touch of a button over here. And if you need to go into more in-depth settings or want to change more stuff, as soon as you do click these buttons, it'll open up the specific climate menu on your infotainment. Some other styling cues I quite like about the interior is that it is quite utilitarian. So you've got exposed hardware and exposed bolts, grab handles and everything like that to showcase that this is an off-roader. Um, it's a utilitarian car, it's been built, it's robust, um, I like that, I like those touches, it doesn't always have to be so smooth and luxury and like that sort of thing, I think the luxury touches are perfect and I like the combination that they've done with the utilitarianness of it, it looks very very cool. And yes, there's a sunroof, so if you do want to let in more light on a nice warm day when the sun's out, you can do that, you can open it as well, it's not panoramic but I think that the fact that there is a sunroof in here is pretty cool. There's a lot of buckies that do not even offer that. Now, this isn't a bucky, but being an off-roader of that nature, I think it's nice that they've added that too. And then onto the drive quality. So what is it like to drive the Tank 300 on roads, on the highways? It's good. Um, I find it very comfortable from the driver's seat. You're sitting comfortably. You've got really good view out of every angle of the car. You've got windows at the back there that open up your your viewing perspective so nothing's really blocked these pillars are quite thin um so you're able to see quite a lot out of this car which i really like um but driving it it is very comfortable the suspension is actually soft enough that on your daily driving on roads like this it's very very smooth there's not a lot of bumping um but it's also firm enough that when you are going off-road that it's able to do everything that it needs to in order to conquer any of those terrains so the the fact that they've found a good balance here is great but when it comes to the steering um the steering is very light and i do feel like it's a little bit disconnected from the car itself so when you're driving even on dirt roads um the car you can feel there's there's a lot of play in the steering wheel and nothing's really happening um so that is a bit weird and in order to immediately go and I don't know do a sharp turn or go around somebody or another car you really have to yank the wheel um, in order to do that because there's a little bit of lag and response that i'm feeling from it it's not terrible but it is something that i'm just noting um, as part of this review and then onto the space now i'll start from the back seats now there's a lot of space back there um, as you'll see here i've got a lot of leg room i've got a lot of headroom um, you can fit three passengers quite comfortably across the back seats um, you've also got some USBs for the passengers in the rear and some vents from the aircon. They do not have their own climate control, which I think is quite sad. I mean, there's a lot of features and tech in the car. The least they could have done is do that for your passengers, especially if you're going off road, give them the option to, to navigate through their own climate in the back there. Um, but otherwise it's still luxury. There's leather all over and it's a very comfortable place to be. But behind them is the boot. Now you open the boot kind of like you would open a normal door, which you have to kind of do that way. And once you get into the boot there, I think the space is quite good. Um, there is bigger space in other SUVs, but the fact that you can push the seats in the back here completely flat down, it gives you a huge space to load stuff if you are doing off-roading trips and you need to throw in a whole bunch of luggage and equipment. You've got so much space to do that. Um, and the fact that it's a completely flat floor is very advantageous to the best use of the space back there and something else that really warrants the price of this car for me is the peace of mind okay so if you do buy this car you are going to be getting a seven year 200,000 kilometer warranty you're also getting a five year 75,000 kilometer service plan 
and then just to cover the battery and high voltage system alone is an eight year 150,000 kilometer like warranty on that system independently and just like any other Haval product you're going to be getting a plethora of safety systems in this car now there's too many for me to list now so I'll put them all on screen but you're going to get things like adaptive cruise control lane keep assist lane departure warning collision warnings driver fatigue alert all of that stuff um, which I think is really cool and again I think it really warrants the price point because if you think of any other cars of over a million rand if you're not specking that stuff it's just going to make the price even higher and higher and higher and just like any of the other hybrid electric vehicles from Haval and GWM you've got launch control so if you ever need to do a launch in an SUV you can do that you simply turn off the stability control um, you put the car into sport mode you put your left foot on the brake your right foot on accelerator let it go and the car will shoot off from a standing start and that's where you actually get to feel all of that power instantly um, it's really fun if you do go for a test drive in this car please ask them to try out the launch control um, I think you're going to enjoy it a lot then onto the design of the car now that's going to form part one of the videos that I did so if you want to have a look at that you can go down into the description I've got part one and part two listed but from the outside I really do like it yes there's a lot of similarities between this and a Jimny and a Jeep and other boxy SUVs like G-Wagons there's a lot of cars that people have compared this to um, but I do think that they've found a way to make it unique and stand out. I love the front grill. I love the lights. I love the way that the daytime running lights are integrated into those um, from like that horizontal strip. I think it looks really cool. Um, you've got these really wide wheel arches that kind of blend into the, the side steps of the car on the side. Um, I think that that looks really cool too. And then from the back, you've got also a very squared off design. Um, but I do like the way that they've used um, the LED lights in the rear tail lights. I love that they've also gone vertical with those. So up front, you've got horizontal lights. At the back, you've got vertical lights. I love the way that the car looks from the outside. Overall, I don't think it looks bad at all. Um, it also comes in some cool colors. Um, there's six of them, if I remember correctly. There's the black, there's the silver, there's the orange. Um, there's also white um, and there's gray as well as red. But Mars red. It's the only one that's got a weird name. The rest of them are just colors. <laughs> and onto the sound system. We'll start with the indicators. I'm not a big fan of that noise. And if the indicators are, and if the indicator sounds are going and other things are beeping in the car, they don't beep, but you can see them happening because you can't have two different sounds going at the same time. It's a weird thing that happens sometimes, but you'll get over it if you do drive the car. But it does have a standard GWM sound system in here. There's a subwoofer. The sound is actually really, really good. It's very impressive. I like it. Um, nothing really negative to say about the sound system. And then onto the sponsor of today's video, which is Naked Insurance. Now, Naked Insurance is pretty cool. They do everything online. It's pretty hassle-free. All you do is go onto their website, put in all the details that you need to in order to get a quote from them, which is going to be your names, surnames, ID numbers, the type of car you're wanting to cover. All of your previous history it gives you all the options to go through you do that and you'll get a quote from them in under two minutes now it's the process that i use for every other video of mine when you go and see the cost of ownership which you'll see on this video that's the process that i go through to go and find out how much the insurance is going to be on any particular video now i do that because it's quick i don't have time to wait around for someone to phone me back give me the run around chase up on a quote here or there it gets done instantly. I have it within two minutes and I can move on with my day. And now you guys can do the same thing. But the benefit there is you can also just get a quote from them. No one's gonna phone you back. No sales agents are gonna be spamming you with phone calls now because you've put all your details. That doesn't happen with Naked Insurance at all. So you'll get a quote from them. You can either keep it, or if you wanna pursue the quotes and then actually start doing business with Naked, you can go on and do that. And then onto my favorite feature of Naked Insurance is the fact that you can pause your cover. And you're probably asking well why would i want to pause my cover well there's instances where you've got two cars they're both insured but you're taking the one on holiday you're going away for three weeks in december and you're leaving your other car in the garage quietly sitting there while you pay for the insurance on it which doesn't make sense so if you're going on holiday pause the cover of that car you can save up to 50 percent of your premiums which you can then use to go into your holiday that you can spend and have fun with instead of having to pay for a car that's really not being driven it's not going to get crashed nothing's going to happen to it so why spend money on it 
Now, if you're interested in getting a quote from Naked Insurance, then please go and check out the link in my description. Um, you'll be able to go get a quote from them. You won't get phoned back. You won't get bothered, but you will get a quote from them in under two minutes. Go check it out. Some other things that still really bug me about the GWM tank is just the design that went on with the steering wheel, right? Nothing wrong with the steering wheel at all, but it's the stalks and the controls behind it. Now, from my driving point of view, I cannot read what's going on on these stalks at all. They're completely hidden by the center column of the steering wheel, so I can't read if my lights are on auto, if they're not, uh, if the wire, where the wipers are. The only time you can see it is when you turn the wheel and you get a glimpse of it. The other thing that you can't see is the cruise control stalk. That's a tiny little one that's also underneath the steering wheel. Um, you can only see it when the steering wheel is turned. And by then you're turning and you're looking where you're going, so you can't look here. So from my view, I can't see any of the stalks at all. And for me, that's a little bit of a design miss there, which I think and hope that they'll fix going forward. Don't know how, but please do. And as I've mentioned, this is a hybrid electric vehicle. And like with some other hybrids, um, the hybrid system is only there to help the car run more efficiently. But just like this one, um, the, the Haval H6 HEV and the Jolin HEV, you can actually drive on electric power alone. So you can drive with the engine off in complete silence. Um, I found that you can get up to maybe about 45 k's an hour, but it's all depending on your throttle input as well as the gradients of the road. So if the car feels like it needs more power, then the engine will kick in instantaneously. You'll hear it, but you definitely won't feel any like jut in the car or anything like that. It's very seamless. It's quite impressive actually the way that it does do that transition. Uh, but yeah, so it's pretty cool. The car charges itself. You never have to plug it in which is something people also don't know. So you never plug this car in. It's got nothing to do with load shedding or SCOM or anything like that, guys. Okay, it's a hybrid. It's not a plug-in hybrid. <laughs> and then onto the verdict of the GWM Tank 300 in the form of the GDR test. So should you get the car, should you drive the car, or should you remove it from the list of cars that you're looking at? Now for me, I would go and drive the car. The Tank 300 is still very new. There's not a lot of people out there that have got one. So I know there's a lot of people that still aren't too sure about it. I really like it. Um, yes, it's got its flaws, but there's a lot of cars that aren't perfect. Um, but I would go take it for a drive. Go take it for a test drive. Go see if you're happy with the power delivery. Do you love the launch control? Do you love the interior? Um, I didn't mention it's also got ambient lighting, so it lights up at night. So if you love the look of this interior, um, the quality of it, um, the way that the hybrid system works, it's really good. So go take it for a drive, see if you love the car as a whole. Um, yeah, and if you do want to go find one or even just go and buy one, then go check one out on changecars.co.za. They're a website that sells new and used cars, but the best thing about them is that the cars that you're buying are from dealers that have been approved and been vetted. So you aren't going to be getting dodgy dealers from weird areas that are trying to scam you or take you for a ride by selling you cars with kilometers turned back and things like that you won't find those cars at changecars.co.za they're all about service and customer satisfaction they'll walk you through the process from start to finish um, their website is also like a hub for everything automotive so you can go and check out car reviews you can read articles um, you can even go and see how much a car is going to cost you um, if you don't know what your budget is so you can put in all of your financial info um, they'll then spit out an amount per month that you can afford and they'll also give you a list of cars that you can afford and buy with that money so I think that that's pretty cool it's very intuitive and very very handy so go check out changecars.co.za they're a proud partner of Greg Dennis Reviews thanks for watching another Greg Dennis Review I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you learned a little bit more about the Tank 300 from GWM um, and when people just pull in front of you you have to overtake them and because you're in a hybrid you've got all the power <laughs> Yeah, so if you did enjoy this review, please will you drop a like below. And if you want to see more car reviews and other automotive content just like this, then please make sure that you're subscribed. And until then, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.